Hi, welcome to day 15 of Vlogmas. Um, my name is Lynn. This is the Wayward Skein. And uh, my God, I've made it. I've only missed one day. That's pretty good for me. <laughs> Anybody who's been around a while, you know that. <laughs> so um, today kind of got away from me. It was a long day. I was very tired. Um, I didn't sleep very well last night. Sorry, my hair is kind of all over the place. Um, didn't sleep well last night, so then I got my tea for the day, which was called Sleepy Lychee, and stupid me made it this morning and started drinking it, exhausted. They're not kidding. <laughs> I can't really blame the tea, though. Like, it is really good. Like, there's no valerian in it. There's no, nothing that's guaranteed to, like, knock you out sort of thing. But it did. <laughs> I started drinking it. And after about half an hour, I was like, why? Why am I so tired? Oh, numpty. <laughs> so, let me tell you, the second I finished my work day, I was crashed out. My Puerto Rico workers were being slammed. It's my night off. I could have volunteered to jump in and help. I was crashed. Totally crashed out. So, yeah. Oops. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I didn't jump in. <laughs> my bad. That's okay. Um, I did jump in last night to help, so it's not a big deal. So, I was struggling a little bit to get my blanket square in because I was so tired. I did get it in. I didn't weave in my end from yesterday's yet, so I was a little lazy. But I did get my square in. I'm so bummed because you see this? This is the end. This is where I finished. You see how it turns into that gorgeous hot pink there? None of that hot pink is in the square. None of it. But that's okay because I got the red, the blue, the purple. And the pink is going to go in my magic ball if I figure out where I put it. There it is. Sorry, there's too much stuff on my desk right now. So, wow. Okay. Not sure what that was all about. Uh, so here's my magic ball. You can tell I've got the little flashlight going. <laughs> because it's nighttime and it's dark. So this side was being completely blown out and that side was dark. So here's my magic ball. You can see all the pretty colors in it. And I'm going to add this which is being totally blown out. It's not quite, well, I mean, it is that bright, but it's not like luminescent. So I'm a little bummed that didn't make it into the square, but that's okay. It's definitely in the tail. Like that's, that's bright. So I got my square in. I have not, whoop, that doesn't belong there. <laughs> I have not yet picked my square for tomorrow. I've got a brownish orangey one here. I've got the red, the purple, and the blue here. Sorry, I'm going to try and do this with it. Dropping my headset. And I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I might do this one, actually. Or I might do orange. I'm not sure. I'm undecided. I'm kind of leaning towards the teal. I'm kind of feeling like a cool color there. So I'm leaning towards this teal. We'll see. I'll decide later. Haven't decided yet. So that's that. And I picked up something last night that I have not knit on in probably two years. Um, I think I started this in 2018. Uh, started it. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I'm wrong. I started it March of 2020. No, that's not right. Did I? Christy, did I start this in March of 2020? Christy doesn't watch Vlogmas, I don't think. She doesn't have time. She doesn't have time. She's too busy. Um, Mandy will remember, but it says here I started it March 8th of 2020. I knit on it for about a month and then didn't touch it again. I took it out today. I, sh I, I showed this on the podcast at some point that I had found it. No, I didn't, I didn't show it. But anyway, I'd found it, and I, but I hadn't started working on it yet. Sorry, the ball was over there. So I have picked up the Pepillon, which I am knitting for me, uh, Christy of Fiber Stash, out of Fiber Stash. So the colorful bits, oh, and it's really coming up nice in this light. Really, really nice. You can, 
it's got a little bit of a sparkle to it. There you go. You can kind of see the sparkle going. But look at those colors. That is her Temple of Sap on the Twinkle Toes base, the Fiber Stash uh, Dye Works Twinkle Toes. And the neutral is called Great Scott. G-R-A-Y-T Scott. Um, a lot of Christie's colorways are named for friends. And uh, this one is named for um, Mandy, who is Coffee and Stitches with Mandy on Floss Tube. Uh, her husband is Scott. So this was called Great Scott. Um, I love the fact that this light, that the camera picks up sparkles when you get close enough. Oh, it's so pretty. But yeah, look at these colors. It's insane. The ball yarn. So I'm going to try to grab the one I'm actually knitting from because there's two in here. Yeah. The ball yarn, when you're looking at it from far away, just looks like this non-distinct dark color. But as soon as you get it up close, you notice all these crazy pops of color. The teals, the purples, the browns, there's greens, there's everything in this. And it is gorgeous. And I decided that it was high time that I picked this up again and finished it. I had to go back. I've been working on it a little bit um, last night and this morning, like very little bit. But I had to undo a few rows. I, I literally had to take back because um, there was a dropped stitch along the edge that had not been picked up when I changed colors. Oops. And I noticed it right away when I picked it up out of the bag. I was like, oh, that's dangerous. I stuck a stitch marker in it and I went and started tinking back to fix it. So that's what I spent last night doing was tinking it back and fixing it. And I added a little bit to it today. So I'm hoping to make some real progress on this now that I don't have the socks in it. I decided to put the teddy bears on hold because I found a better pattern that I'd rather do that I think is going to be easier with the yarn I'm using. So I'm either going to, I don't know if I'm going to continue with the yarn I'm using because it is seriously, seriously awful to knit with. I may just throw it out. It is, um, I thought I had a skein out. It's called Bernat Pearl Spun. It is a boucle, viscose, linen, and nylon. It is the most horrific thing I have ever knit with in my life. And my sister-in-law's mom bought nine skeins of it. I don't know what she was planning to make. But she never got around to it, and I can kind of understand why. <laughs> it is horrible to knit with. It's got soft bits. But it's all because there's like, uh, I don't know if you can see it here. It's going to totally blow it out. I'm going to see if I can. Yeah, so there are little pearly bits that are super, super soft. And the rest of it is super scritchy. And I don't know what the hell they were thinking creating this yarn, but it's terrible. <laughs> and I don't want to knit with it. And that's why the teddy bear hasn't seen any love because I hate this stuff and it's awful. But I did find a better pattern, um, and I think, like, my, my sister-in-law's mom left a fair amount of yarn behind. Um, some of it got tossed immediately. There were a couple of skeins of, what was it called? I want to say Bernat Jessica or something like that. It was a, a sort of eyelashy kind of thing to make scarves with, like boa-type scarves. And as soon as I took it out of the bag, it started shedding everywhere. And I was like, nope, not doing this. And I threw it right in the garbage bag. <laughs> like, I have an entire bag of faux fur. I have skeins and skeins. Fun fur, I'm sorry, fun fur. A whole bag of it in different colors. What am I going to do with this? This is going to be given to children to play with, essentially. Um, I am going to offer it up to my nieces and nephews' school. If they don't want it, bye bye I'm not attached enough to anything to keep it just because it might be useful someday. Plus, my, my partner kind of teases me about being a hoarder. <laughs> because, and he hasn't even seen how much urine I have in total. 
So, um, yeah, I've got like a bag of this stuff in different colors. I've got black, I've got white, I've got red, I've got hot pink, I've got some orange. I, like, really, what do you do with this? Lion brand? What do you do with this? So I've got bags of this stuff. But I also have tons and tons and tons of gorgeous stuff, like this sport weight, that I made the bunny out of, which I still have not assembled. I have the entire bunny in a baggie. It's all stuffed. It's got eyes. I haven't assembled it yet. It kind of scares me, but that'll be um, a project that I tackle at some point. That's not that big a deal. I don't know what to do with this now. <laughs> there's so much of it. But yeah, there's all lots of other yarns that she um, left that I could use for the stuffies, and I bought the cutest little pattern today. It was called, uh, it's called Baby Elephants, I think. It'll be at the top of my library, so give me one. It's called Baby Elephant by Claire Farrell, and it is the cutest darn thing. Um, look it up if you haven't seen it. She's Claire Farrell Designs, and her website is Claire, C-L-A-I-R-E, F-A-I-R-A-L-L designs.com. I'm going to link it in a little thingy. Um, it is the cutest thing ever. All her patterns are like ridiculously cute. <laughs> and the way I came across this pattern was completely by accident. Um, I saw an ad advertising on Facebook. And they were charging something like $15 for it on sale from $25 just for the pattern. Like just for the pattern. And I was like, seems fishy to me. So I went and looked it up. I looked up baby elephant pattern and I found this original. And not only did they steal her pattern, they stole her images from her website. <laughs> and they were selling this pattern on Facebook Marketplace. Well, not Marketplace, but it was an ad on Facebook for a badly translated clearinghouse kind of place. Um, so I was like, huh. I'm going to buy it from the designer, obviously, who was charging way, way less for it, by the way. Um, so I bought it from the designer, and I sent her an email saying, um, hey, look, I don't know if you're aware of this, but these people are selling your design on Facebook. And I haven't got, I don't know if I've gotten a response from her, actually. I haven't looked at my email, but I doubt I've gotten a response from her yet. But uh, I have not. But, um, oh my goodness, I haven't checked my email in like a day. That's all from, really? That's all from today? That's insane. I've got like 30 emails just from today. I'm used to that at work, but not my personal email. What gives? It's Christmas time, so everybody's sending out um, advertising emails. But, ugh. <laughs> that's just rude. 30 emails. Um, so, yeah, I'm working on this. Long tangent. Sorry. Those of you who know me, you're used to this. Um, and I'm very excited because I plan on making a lot of progress on this in the next couple of weeks. I've got a little bit of downtime. I've got tomorrow off for my day job. That's a quasi day off because I still work the evening job. But I've got a whole day to myself until 5.30. So I'm really excited about that. There is some stuff I plan on doing around the house, but I also plan on doing a lot of this. So stay tuned. I want to show you where I'm at tomorrow. Um, it's not the sort of thing that I can work on while I'm taking calls. It's not the sort of thing I can work on while I'm in meetings because I do, it's a very intense pattern. You have to read every single line and there's a lot of counting involved and I just, I can't work on it when, while I'm doing anything else. I have to just concentrate on that. So I actually have a classical music station that I listen to on YouTube and they produce compilations of classical music on several different themes. They've got hundreds of compilations and they're each a couple of hours long. So usually I just throw on one of those. It's called Halodon Music if you're looking for something to listen to. Um, I do it when I'm working on an assignment. I do it when I'm working on anything that requires intense concentration because it's all instrumental. So I can listen to music and make my brain happy while not distracting myself with lyrics. Um, which is important for me. Um, if the music I'm using to concentrate better, anybody who has autism or ADHD knows what I'm talking about here, you have to have stimulation to be able to concentrate. 
Um, one of the reasons I get in meetings is because if I'm just sitting in a meeting, not speaking for three hours, I am going to fall asleep. And that looks bad. So I knit. <laughs> I used to get permission from my college professors at the beginning of a class to knit in class because if I'm just sitting there listening to you talk for three hours, I'm going to be asleep and I'm not going to retain any of it. So this at least allows me to concentrate on what is being said. As long as it's not a pattern like this where I have to like look at every line and count the whole time. I used to bring stuff like this to class or socks or something that I didn't have to concentrate on mentally but my hands would be doing something while I was concentrating mentally on something else and would make it easier for me. Uh, so for all you neurotypicals out there, you've just learned something about how a neurodivergent brain works, because that's it. <laughs> but yet, when we're overstimulated, like when, uh, when I'm driving in a storm, I have to turn the radio off because I can't concentrate because that's taking, it's too much stimulation for my brain. And my kids could never under, what well, my kids my son got it after a while. I remember being in the car with my ex and the kids and having to, you know, having asked them several times, please shush, stop talking. I just need to concentrate for a bit. And they would just keep going. And I would eventually blow my top and scream at them. I need you to shut up. If you want us to get home alive, I need you to be quiet now. <laughs> And it's the sort of thing where I couldn't articulate correctly what was going on. But essentially, they were causing my brain to... Uh, the closest I can come is they were causing it to sort of fritz out. I couldn't process what I needed to process to drive safely because of the stimulation that, that was going on around me. Um, and this was like before I knew that... I was on the spectrum. This was before I knew any of that. So it was just like they would see me losing my shit and freak out because I had screamed at them. And it was like, okay, but I asked you like 20 times nicely before that and you ignored me. So it became a necessity. And yes, I had to turn off the radio and scream at you because you weren't listening. And it's sort of this, the type of thing that Zach and I know are, are better at communicating with each other. There are times where I know he's been uncomfortable in the social situation and I will try to fill the silence in the car by talking to him. And he has now gotten to the point where he can articulate to me, mom, I just need you to shut up right now. I need to decompress. I need to, I need silence. So um, he is getting better about expressing that. I kind of wish I had gotten better at expressing that earlier in my life, but there we are. I didn't know it was a problem. <laughs> this is why Everybody's like, well, why bother getting tested for autism? Like, you can't do anything about it, so why bother getting tested? Because knowing allows you to build coping mechanisms, like being able to articulate, I need silence right now. I am overstimulated. I am on the edge of losing my, I need, I need quiet. And being able to articulate that is really important. And I don't know why I'm waffling on about this. This is kind of ridiculous. But anyway, now you've learned something. Or you already knew it because it happens to you or somebody close to you. So I was, it was kind of funny because I was catching up on, um, I wasn't catching up on, that's, that's not the right way to word it. I was looking for some vlogmas to watch because there was none, none today. I was like, Meh, where's all my vlogmas? And then Kate posted hers because I was, I, I was struggling to get the square in today. It just wasn't clicking. I was too tired and my brain was just like, <laughs> not today. So um, late in the afternoon, Kate posted her episode and I was like, Yes! <laughs> that is vlogmas! And Kate blew my mind because I learned watching her episode today that one of my favorite actors ever and I'm very, very embarrassed by this. Um, oh shoot, I've forgotten his first name now. It's like, this is, yeah, this is the kind of stuff that happens. Shoot. It's gone. Um, Gleason. Brendan Gleason. There we go. Um, that Brendan Gleeson played Mad-Eye Mo Moody in the Harry Potter movies. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> of course he did. Of course that's him. But why did my brain not make that connection when I was watching the movie? Like, really, brain? What gives? And it was hilarious because I've seen him in so many things, and I, I adore him. He's one of my favorite Irish actors. I love him. 
And I was like, how did I not know that that was Brendan Gleeson? Like, how did I not figure that out? <laughs> what? And it was funny because she commented, she said, did you know that his son Domhnall was the one who played Bill? And I was like, yes, that I knew. But for some reason, my brain did not connect that dad was that eye. And um, it's the sort of odd leap that my brain normally makes like instantaneously. So it was like really weird that I hadn't figured that out. But yeah, that, that, that broke me a little bit today, Kate. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> now I want to watch all the Harry Potter movies again, which I think is, is an acceptable use of, you know, Christmas downtime and so on and so forth. So maybe the Eight Nights of Hanukkah, I'm going to have me a Harry Potter marathon. One each night. Sorry, Harry. Yeah, there's it. <laughs> It always confuses me because there's seven books and eight movies. It's kind of like the Twilight thing. There are three books but five movies, and I'm not sure how they got that. Like, that makes no sense to me. There are five, five movies or four movies? I don't know. But the, the Harry Potter ones, I know there's seven books and eight movies. And it's kind of funny because my partner is like, oh, well, I've never seen all the Harry Potter movies. And I'm like, what? <laughs> We're rectifying that very soon. So he's last night he was telling me, he was like, I've never seen, oh, which one have I seen? He's never seen The Wizard of Oz. I was like, how have you never seen The Wizard of Oz? Like, this was the one thing that every time it came on, and it would come on like twice a year when I was a little kid on TV, like we would drop everything and watch it. And he was like, I don't know, I've just never seen it. I was like, what? <laughs> It's the kind of thing, like, when you meet somebody that didn't have the same upbringing as you, like, it's it's weird sometimes that, that, like, the weird little teeny things that are such a huge disparity in your head. <sighs> there we are. That's me rambling for 20 minutes because I'm super tired and will likely go right back to bed when this is done. <laughs> Would blame the tea. That's what I blame. It's delicious. Lychee is one of my favorite fruits. I, whenever I can get them fresh... I will make myself sick on lychees. I love lychees. And they should be coming in the store very soon. So whenever we would get them, when I used to work at the grocery store, I would buy like whatever we had. And the manager used to get mad at me because I wouldn't leave any for customers. And I'm like, I'm a customer. I'm buying them. What do you care? <laughs> yeah, I got in trouble for that a couple of times. <laughs> so I will leave this here. It has been a long eventful day and I needs a nap so unfortunately I don't have a picture of the I didn't have a picture of the um, mini to put in the um, beginning but I did put this and something else in there so oh, look, I love it. it's so pretty and I'd rather look at this in my face anyway I will shut up now, I promise.